<laughs> hey folks, man, this is Monk. We are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And I'm joining us always with my co-host. We got Bobby Blockbuster. Hey you guys. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. yo. <laughs> oh god. This is a show where we talk about the classic films that shaped and warped our childhoods. And and you know, according to what Bob just said, man, you probably guessed today's <laughs> um, episode. It's gonna be about the Goonies from 1985. Yes. And this film, and the story goes is this a band of adventurous kids take on the might of a property developing company which plans to destroy their home to build a country club. Mm-hmm. When the children discover an old pirate map in the attic, they follow it into an underground cavern and search of lost treasure but come up against plenty of dangerous obstacles along the way Oof. yeah and this film came out of uh, june 7th 1985 um the cast is uh pretty stacked man yeah. you're going to recognize a lot of these names who will go on to do legendary things in hollywood and uh tv uh, we got sean Aston who plays our main character mikey we got josh brolin aka thanos who plays um his brother brad uh brand uh, Corey Feldman is also in this. We got Jeff Cohen, um, Kihu Kwan, who's probably going to get him an Oscar this year. Shout out, Data. And we got uh, Carrie Green. Um, we also got Martha Plimpton, um, Joe Pantaleano, and um, John uh, Matu- Mat- Matuzak. Uh, <laughs> I think he was yeah. an NFL guy. He played Sloth. Oh, actually, I was going to wait, dude. He actually, he was a Raider. Mm, he won yeah. two Super Bowls with us. And if you notice, when we first get introduced to Sloth, he's wearing a Raiders shirt. Mm. Before, the one that he rips off and there's a Superman underneath. It was a Raider yeah, shirt. That's so shout up. out, shout out, Sloth, just for being a Raider, dude. We yeah. love you just because of that. Uh, we get uh, also Robert Davi. I think he's one of the Fratellis in he this. Uh, we also get Ann Ramsey, Mama Fratelli. Um, they say Cindy Lauper is in there, but just her video is playing in the background. That's it. She, <laughs> yeah, she, had, she had the Goonies theme song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great song, by the way, though. Um, we also get uh, Nick McLean, uh, this mouth's uh, mother, and just a bunch of other characters as well in this. So uh, I think that most of these guys. Oh, I want to point out uh, Lupe on Taveros, uh, who plays Rosalita, and Mary um, Ellen Trainer uh, plays Miss Walsh, the uh, the matriarch of this family, and uh, Keith Walker, who plays Mr. Walsh, who all this time did I just found out i thought that was stephen king yeah <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> wow that's crazy yeah. man what so every, everyone else day. is pretty much you know more uh minor characters mm-hmm. in this film but this is an amazing film man um and i guess what do we want to start uh I'm, with I, on this I, i'm gonna just i'm gonna just strike while the iron's hot you are you are you already preheated the oven so i'm gonna just go ahead and bake this bread i mean i'm gonna stick with with this cast and with this this band of characters i mean i love this group of characters that we get you know and it is such a solid introduction at the beginning of this film we get to see them all as individuals and then also how they work as a as a unit you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and like, their personalities their personalities they all are very different but you know um and, and that's what makes them great like my personal favorites i love chunk i thought chunk is my favorite <laughs> and then right behind chunk is data i mean they, they almost run parallel to me you know what i'm saying but they are all great and they're all unique and um each you know, each person that watched this will will, will find rela- relatabilities to to different characters for your own various reasons. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But the, the, this this personality that that they really they they just it's at the forefront for mm-hmm. all of them. And what's really cool is then, you know, for this to be like you know an an adventure film. You know, it shows that that that, that this group. I mean, they're their 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 lust for adventure but their love for each other it is crew love you know what i'm saying they do not put nothing above the crew they are they are the goon squad for a reason and they lead with their hearts you know whether they're getting into trouble or you know trying to save the day or whatever the case may be and and, and we get that you know what i'm saying and it's like when you when you watch this film you know what i'm saying you don't see friendship you see brother shit you know what i mean they, they, these guys they 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 will ride or die for each other but they won't die because goonies never say die. <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's, it's an interesting cast of characters and i think that's a testament to the writing here because all of these characters if you, i saw this film um when it first came out of theaters i was a little mm-hmm. kid and i remember seeing it you know then and you know so and it's funny because look at the um 
release date june 7th so june 8th is my mom's birthday so i don't know if that we just happened to be her her birthday weekend and she wanted to go to the movies but i still don't know exactly what day we saw this it could have been weeks later you know after it's already been out but i do remember seeing this in the theater and that's the thing that stood out to me i was a kid i wasn't as old as these kids but but just seeing you know kids in the neighborhood kind of you know a clique that 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 went on this adventure together man i thought it's great man so um but but i think after that we get the, these great characters the story itself i think is really unique i mean um the the um synopsis kind of hints at it but basically um these are the kids in this neighborhood their whole development has been um put pretty much it's being sold by people developers who want to turn this thing into a golf course and and the the kids um these families they're the last holdouts for yeah. whatever reason their section of the neighborhood their parents just haven't decided to sell but then there's pressure on them because a lot of them i don't know what's going on in this film economically but it seems like all the parents are struggling too they're having a hard time you know making their mortgage payments and stuff like that so and it's a so, payday it's a yeah it's just, yeah so the developers are leaning on them it's a time of economic hardship so yeah. i guess the rest of the people in the neighborhood took the um the parachute out yeah. of here yeah. and sold you know it's like all right it's easier to sell i got some value in this thing i could sell and just move somewhere else but for whatever reason these kids parents are determined to stay and um and i think it's cool because you do see the other kids the the, the developers kids also are kind of taunting these kids a little bit yeah. you can tell there's a class war in a little oh, bit you know definitely. from this upper class those yes. kids you know the yeah. The, the kids driving a convertible in high school, you yeah, know, yeah. that, that kind of dickhead his, kid. His little leather you know? jacket. You can tell he's probably a football player, but not even good. His dad probably yeah. paid someone to get him on the yeah, squad. Yeah, we, we, we all we all know those kind of kids, man. Whack. And um, but even they're taunting, you know, these um so the the, the self name of Goonies, man. But but I think that's great. And essentially, um, in the course of packing up and just getting ready to have to move eventually, but they're going through um, you know, friends are all over there in the attic going through his dad's old stuff and his dad it seems to be a history buff so you know they particularly in the realm of pirates and stuff so they find what they realize was an old pirate treasure map yeah. you know what i'm saying and they decide to like yo let's see if we can find this this looks like around here for some reason yeah. they find an article about a um, treasure hunter from the area who mm-hmm. disappeared um who went looking for this stuff and they decide to retrace his steps and just yep. take a chance and then also to be like one last adventure that they can all go on and, and have a chance to hang out and make some and memories before they all have to move out of here dude i swear like i say this all the time you can tell we do this a lot because that that's just the perfect way to just bring me in because i was just about to say you know the one thing that i love about this story more than anything being an 80s baby being you know mm-hmm. someone that was that was part of a, of a group of friends similar to the goonies uh shout out to the crew y'all know who you are um and you know coming up in the 80s you know what i'm saying going out on adventures this is the kind of adventure that you would hope to get Mm-hmm. brought into you know <laughs> we we want to find a trap door we want to go to the other side we want to we want to go on these this 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 well executed adventure where we where there is there's booby traps on every corner there there's danger there's there's fear but there's also the trust and love in your comrades that everything's going to be all right because we rock it and we're going to mm-hmm. figure it out yeah and, and with with this story it covers all of these bases i mean when you when you, when you sit and you look at it i mean look at all the things it has it has a hidden treasure with a map included so that's that's a big plus you get the criminal element in the fratellis which um as sub characters the fratellis are great you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying i don't know how they are in real life but (laughs) in the movie (laughs) they're they're great great, man they are great great. yeah and then and then you also get you know a quasi monster element in sloth which i i love the look of sloth like i said i mean i just He's, fact, he's more like a Frankenstein's monster. You know, yeah, he if, kinda, if it, like like a misunderstood monster. He's a misunderstood. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And you know, he kind of reminds me a lot of like the Toxic Avenger in the way that he looks, minus being green. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, those that have seen Toxic Avenger, I mean, you, yeah, he, he big, strong, could punch his fist through somebody's whole entire head, but had a heart of gold. That's mm-hmm. that's sloth. He just, you know, he was mistreated and 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 then just thrown in a basement away by the ones that were supposed to love him and take care of him you know what mm-hmm. i mean but then um outside of that too the, the the one of the driving forces of this film man is hope the goonies have a last ditch effort to save the day save the town save themselves save their parents yeah hope and i think also adding that whole 
the you know the, the, they, they they got a deadline that that, yeah. that makes okay. the urgency increase a little bit and also putting the fratellis fratellis on their ass through the movie yes. too so that gives also another sense of urgency it's like yes, it's it like is. we can't just linger here yes, and take our time with these puzzles and these traps we gotta we gotta no, push we through gotta keep pushing they on our heels you know and, and, and you're absolutely right there is this is time stamped you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying this is their last last dif- ditch effort because uh my man mouth uh that's uh cory feldman's character he makes it plain and clear right when he shows up that you know he's like yo this is our last weekend together Mm -hmm. you know and oh and just speaking of that while it's while it's in my head i love the look of the house you know what i'm saying like the the, all the 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 gadgets like mikey is so lucky to have data as his next door neighbor because you can tell that data had a heavy influence on the whole situation that was going on in the front yard like you know (laughs) every other person with a front yard someone comes to the gate and uh you know you make them do the truffle shuffle before they come into the threshold they just go open the door Mm now mikey you know that he opens the thing and the bowling ball goes and then they, you even have a chicken <laughs> that has to squirt out an egg to, to, to you know to, to make things rock so you know i'm just like man it data man his inventions are great they are mm-hmm. great 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 and you know not for nothing i you know i i appreciate his character so much in this film but i have a newfound love for when he falls through the floor of the the pirate ship and he kirks off it's great. Mm-hmm. Like you hear, he's like, yeah, everybody, they tell me my inventions ain't nothing. I spend all day doing these inventions. <laughs> I fall through the floor. You tell me to take the stairs. I'm, I'm tired of seeing skeletons. I'm tired of booby traps. I'm tired of you correcting me. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're, if, we're, if we're thinking, of, like, if that's kind of like Sam L's uh, moment in, um, except it, it's not a bad as ending of uh, Sam L in uh, Deep Blue Sea, where he just yes. passes out and then something just happens to him. And it's just oh, like, yes. boom. Yes. That's definitely, uh, we're going to survive, chomp. No, yeah, no. yeah, that's definitely, uh, <laughs> data's rant man but yeah. but but it's great man um um the 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 environment everything works too man like yeah. it's not a city environment it's it's a lived in working class um on the coast um sea town this this definitely yeah. feels like maine i don't know um who um worked on this film yeah. like it, it feels like maine dude it like does. and then there's like and, this, um, this this haze it, it, it's, yeah. it's like one of those places where it doesn't seem like the sun shines but that also mm-hmm. just adds extra emphasis to the story because it's not a bright sunshiny day mm-hmm. these guys are about to lose everything yeah well, it definitely has a real community feel mm-hmm. um you know all the buildings around there i kind of, i just like the, the look of this town man really hilly so so you get some pretty cool shots in this film um and then and then we get on to once the adventure goes on um, uh, the the way they get involved with the Fratellis is interesting because this yeah. the Fratellis hideout is where their quest essentially starts. That's where the map sends them. That's where kind of the reason where um, Chester Copperpot, the, yeah. the, uh, the treasure hunters info that they found who who, who disappeared looking for this, this stuff. But it starts there and that starts the whole Fratelli thing. The Fratelli realizes these kids are looking for treasure because Chunk ain't really good at uh, keeping secrets. <laughs> really? Oh, dude, that's my other favorite part. Yo, when they when they sit him down and they're like, you tell us everything. He's like, everything. And it made, my man starts from kindergarten. He's like, and it, and I, picked, I tripped my sister down the steps. I blamed it on the Dog, and then, man, it's, 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 just, it's just great writing and great <laughs> yes. performances, yes. man. But 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 the things that really shine here too, like once we get in, they get in underground into the interior, the set designs and the pieces. Because yeah. then it it flips the switch, man. You're almost looking like a, at a kid um, version of Indiana Jones, and each yes. each step that they get further in, it's a different environment. It's, it's decorated differently. The the booby traps, the the, the skeletons. It, and it, 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 it makes dude, you feel like you're going on a mission, dude. The water like, slide. Mm-hmm. Like, I would ride that today if I could find it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You kidding me? And then, yeah. I mean, dude, and then when, like I said, as they go deeper into this cave, I mean, mm-hmm. like, dude, I, I, like I said, I remember being a little dude. Like, we, we would seek out trying to find places like this to see if they really exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then, and then, I mean, dude, after you get through all the booby traps and the dope ass water slide then you find an actual pirate ship Mm -hmm. with gold on it yeah man what this is cool man this is this this part hardy boys and and all that those books like kind of come to life man to see this thing on the screen like this yes and Mm -hmm. then and like you said like the the tie-in to um indiana jones is magnificent because you know coincidentally enough 
Kwe, 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 Kwe Kwan, uh, the data mm-hmm. ends up giving another standout performance in Temple of Doom as short round. Does Temple of Doom before this or after I this? I want to say it was after. I think mm-hmm. it was like a year or two after. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I, I want to say our first uh, Quan experience was as data. Mm-hmm. Cause, I mean, because I mean, even when you, when you look at his his character as short round, I mean, very similar um, in mannerisms and personality. You know what I'm saying? Just minus the invention. Well, actually, Temple of Doom was might have been the first time because that was um '84, dude. Mm-hmm. This is like a one year before this, man. Oh. Mm-hmm. And he seemed a lot younger in that film too, compared okay. to here. Yeah, it was a year younger. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, man, like I said, mm-hmm. man, you know, we learn something new every. Because, because, because it's was weird because at that age, man, a year or two years, that makes a big difference, man, it on really a kid. Does. Like, like, it and, really and it, does. yeah, you could you could tell the the difference, man. Wow. But but it's just such it's a shit. fun time, man. Yeah. Like 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 those elements that are thrown in there, the adventure aspects, the dangers, and like I said, the fatalities on on their butt, man. But um, I did notice some differences. Um, uh, like like the slide scene. I think right before that there's a part where they're in the caverns and there's this plant monster that shows up and they run away from it yeah. and they end up going down the slide but that wasn't in the theatrical cut mm-hmm. i only noticed that when it this thing hit the uh, vhs so there's right. a little bit more footage um people say it might have got cut for time or maybe it was just a little bit extreme outside of yeah. what the film was presenting because most of the dangers in this are real life things even yeah. though they're booby traps and they're really exaggerated but there's so no rocks there's no really creatures falling. yeah, yeah no, but, no, but there's no. no like creatures and monsters oh, yeah, you know yeah, a dinosaur stuff. doesn't jump yeah. out on but them damn yeah. rocks was falling yeah 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 <laughs> so so maybe it got cut just to kind of keep the thing a little bit more grounded and not so outrageous but you but, know what but even, it's fun man it's crazy even with this this film being grounded and and you know treading on that like reality realm mm-hmm. it's still it has a a, a a very majestic feel like mm-hmm. it's, it's very magical and, and 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 whether you watch this as a child or as an adult it, it'll get the blood flowing it'll get mm-hmm. you wide-eyed and it'll it'll get you like to you know get in tune with your sense of your adventurous side mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and want to you know go go exploring or go you know experience new things yeah like like i think i think you know it's probably a testament to also how it's shot too because um yeah. you know it's, it's interesting in the beginning everything's kind of close but then when they set off on our adventure everything is wide shots up until they actually get to the fratelli's hideout and then we get back inside those caverns and stuff but but the scale of it it blows the scale of what they're yeah. doing up to like a big degree it feels like a grand adventure man you get like there's not there's not much difference from them setting out on their bikes then when um the hobbit finally came out with with peter jackson's and you see sam and and uh frodo yeah. and all them take off to to go you yes. know what i'm saying out on their adventure it, it kind of gives you similar vibes yes. the world just seems so much bigger you know that they're stepping out into and you know and and, and uh, a testament to the way this was shot because even though it's not a pov style film mm-hmm. the way that th- the look of this film you feel like you're part of the crew you, yeah. you feel like you're, you're watching this film through your eyes as being a member of the goon mm-hmm. squad and that that mm-hmm. just that is also what makes this film so amazing yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. And, and i think also the um the music on top of that because because then the music is giving you the beats and then like like the like 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 when he holds that little eye thing up and he's looking through it and he yes. sees the islands out there lining up and the the tone that comes over you're like yo it just or, or, it, it tells you how to it almost it, it it's almost instructing you how to feel in this moment yes. you know or, or like when when he when he they have the skull thing and they figure out how, how to place it to turn mm-hmm. it or the music that plays when they find the pirate ship yeah or when he, yeah, when the, he actually the, has his one on one conversation <laughs> with uh, with one mm-hmm. eye Willie and everything mm-hmm. I mean like you said it's it's this is what it's, it's giving this movie a sense of feeling like like even 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 feeling. data has a theme when he's what? doing his My gadget man. stuff like it, he, his, he i love the theme song before he but i love his theme in the beginning because <laughs> it's like 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 when he when he um does the, when he um <laughs> slides into the like yeah yeah, yeah, the yeah. He slides into that like and every time like even when when the fratellis and he confronts them with the teeth and it's the same theme plays and it's yes. like it's it's, it's 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 almost like it's like, like dude it's, it's like he's not <laughs> Person. he's like a superhero mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and, i mean obviously you know you, you find out through the film he compares himself to uh 007 with james bond mm-hmm. um which is very understandable but like yeah anytime he breaks out one of his gadgets and they always malfunction but he's always leading with extreme confidence like i believe in my inventions and i believe they're gonna do what i need them to do mm-hmm. like, like when it's when he when the, the damn um 
the extendo uh, uh, boxing glove. It first comes out, it damn damn thing almost hits him, but then he he retracts it, and he's in the Fertellis are just looking like what the hell? Yeah. And he retracts it and still hits him with it. Yeah, I kind of I'm kind of wonder about the um, behind the scenes and uh, of it, man. Because honestly, man, if you told me Steven Spielberg directed this, I would believe you. Yeah, like it's such like I don't like it's such a like so similar in style yes. and, and tone like i feel like if he did this film it would play out similar so but then he, he had an attachment to yes this, right? was he a producer or I something producer. or yeah maybe maybe there's some type of uh, but, but or maybe also, him and richard donner also had a, some kind of relationship we also know that you know when but when, the production company is amblin so that's okay. spielberg's company yeah so so, so and, maybe that's with, part with of spielberg, it too you know being attached as a producer you know a lot of times in films you know even though the director is a director the producers do have heavy influence mm -hmm. I mean, look at how many films they say guillermo del toro is a producer or working on production mm -hmm. but those films play out as if he was sitting in the director chair yeah so yeah yeah that's that's interesting man mm -hmm. <laughs> that's wild man um so what else you want to mention about this man i mean outside of everything we've already talked about i mean like i said this is one of my personal favorite films um like i said it is mm -hmm. it is it is you know when it comes to adventure stories it, you know you can't get better than this films mm -hmm. are that are like this you know all, all of the the things that this film has to offer you know the other adventure films that i see they 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 hit the sim same similar notes mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying with 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 giving us this this plot this premise yeah they're trying to goonie us you, you know, know? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they, they want to be part of the goons i mean I think about it anymore. think about it um stranger things is essentially a goonies tv series yeah. like that thing is just and you know it's, it's goonies but but you're throwing in supernatural elements it, or, but or even better <laughs> yet you know one of my other childhood favorites uh look at monster squad which mm -hmm. we haven't done that yet but we will trust me on that but that is that is a monster version of the Goonies. Mm -hmm. That's it. We we get and you know or or even like the Sandlot, you know, in which we we've yeah, done that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's and, some Goonies and, going on, and, and that's why <laughs> you know these the this this film is so uh, important to me uh, personally and just important to the film world because you know when you establish the importance of friendship and how meaningful it is. You know, you, you can't go wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, anyone who's anyone has a friend that they can depend on. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or those that don't wish they did. You know what I mean? And this film, like, it just, it shows how to be a good friend, but also how to receive one. You know what I mean? And then just the adventures that they go on and it just this this whole element. And then you get to end, you end up saving the day. And another cool thing I love, I love, love, love the ending. You know what I'm saying? Like, like once once we get you know sloth coming out, I, mm -hmm. I thought that was dope. Chunk coming in, bringing sloth. Hey, you guys! All that <laughs> stuff that was dope. Um, but then it just it melts my heart when every time I see it, when sloth picks up the rock, and then Chunk was the last one. And he grabs Chunk. He's like, Chunk, I love Chunk. I know you, Chunk. And it's just like, it's like, oh man, you know, you don't want sloth to die. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But then when he comes out, Chunk receives uh, or gives him the same love. He's like, bro, you coming to live with me, man? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really cool too, because then we see, um, you know, as everyone reunites with their the parents, parents that's kind of cool. You see too, where man. they get their personalities the from. Parents, like you yeah. see the dad trying. He had like he it, where where Data had the boxing glove spring thing. The dad had like a, a camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or like mm. you know, you see Mikey's parents or or, or Chunk's mom was like, "You missed dinner, but I brought you something." He's like, "Yeah, thank you, mama." You know, it's like it's, it's you know, these are things that just dude, it's it's heartwarming. It's fulfilling. Mm. This is a very fulfilling movie from beginning yeah, to end. Yeah, you know yeah. It's, I mean? it's one of the greats, man. It's, it's what movies I think should be, man. Yes. Just give me some entertainment. Give me some thrills. Man. You don't always got to make me feel good at the end. No. But, but, but this thing, man, this is like a really great run like yes. this is an awesome film man and yeah it holds know, up to this day like it's not like I, I, I keep hearing them talking about revisiting or dropping a sequel with these kids older and i was like good luck i would watch it if you did it and got some of these just people because, back yeah just because because i respect this so much but but it's also like it's perfect it's perfect, it's perfect the way it is like it's just it's one of these things is just like you're not going to see too many things like this no. man where every every shot matters every scene you don't feel like nothing's wasted there's no wasted screen time yes. and, and it's it's great man it's great there's no way to dialogue um and like i said it it, it carries a, a, a an emotional compass you know like i said i don't watch every movie that that i've seen um to to, to feel a feel good feeling but this one hits the heart man mm -hmm. it, on very on, on on many levels and if they do revisit this do it right 
Mm-hmm. Do it right, because I would hate to have to have a, sh- a show where we talk about it and have to cook Goonies too. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Have him, I might man. have to wear I, I might have to wear like like goggles or something so no one can see my eyeballs sweat because I do not want to have to cook Goonies too. So if you're gonna do it, do it right. Yeah, I, I think we could wrap up on that, man. Um, but yeah, man, check this out if you haven't seen it, which I don't know how you haven't. But but there are probably some people who are younger who are watching this and don't, don't know about this film. And if you've seen it, watch it again. I yes. watch this thing several times a year it's when i throw on in the background and just just you know enjoy the moments and as it come up um but yeah man make sure you check us out at classic cinematics on instagram man buy some merch too man we got classes in the the cinematic um shirts um in the link below so don't be afraid to be cool man yeah subscribe (laughs) and we're gonna be back again this is monk catch me at monkey blood on twitter and instagram yes and this is bobby blockbuster you can catch me on instagram at bobby blockbuster 118 out there in the real world doing the truffle shuffle baby (laughs) all right so we out of here peace